Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Welcome to Shunya One, your weekly business and technology roundup. I'm your host, Shiladitya. Today, on our first episode, we have with us two very interesting gentlemen, also in tech and in social media and in pretty much uh, everything to do with the new media today. So I think uh, it's a good start off. So why don't I introduce uh, Girish Madhya and Amit Doshi. Hello. And uh, Girish Madhya is... Publisher of T3 Magazine, which is a technology and gadget magazine. Right. And Amit? Uh, I run uh, Indusfox Media, which is the network on which you're listening to this podcast. Yep. And the reason why uh, we're here. So hopefully we should be able to make this fun. I think so. And have some interesting conversations going forward. So let's let's kick it off. We have a bunch of things we've been talking about. Yep. And I think uh, we were continuing to talk about. Uh, hot topic today, obviously, is uh, the crazy world of internet privacy and how it doesn't exist. And that's the scary part. So just to rally off uh, with... I mean, I think we are at a peak internet privacy breach phenomenon or stories of the week going on. I think there's one out every week now. Uh, The last uh, three months have just been full of them with uh, serious celebrity, uh, I would say celebrity social media people uh, who have had incidents. So what do you guys think? What's happening? Uh, I think when you say peak, you're underestimating the problems that are still to come. I don't think we're anywhere close to the peak of privacy issues right now. I mean, just in terms of, uh, so our footprints are large, right? The, the amount of digital footprints, the amount of digital cross that we put out there is just so intense that, uh, and once you start applying the future technologies to that, which are still to come, big data and AI, as right. such, right, which are still really, really nascent, right. at that point in time, privacy is a non-existent concept, right? So, I mean, like, the uh, idea of protecting your privacy, I think, is really important, but Having said that, I don't know if it's a game that can be won. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the bigger issue is when your software reading your tweets or your posts and actually making meaning out of that and seeing patterns in it. That's where uh, privacy, which we believe we can manage and we can handle, sort of goes out of hand, you know, goes out of our control. So I think that's a bigger fear once you have technology sort of stalking you. Right. And delivering uh, executable right. information, you know, how the U.S. elections were fought. You know, you had Facebook uh, softwares being run, Facebook posts, and you had uh, specific communication for specific audiences. Right. Uh, imagine that coming to a stalker's, you know, hands. But I think, yeah. I think uh, we've always sort of ignored that side of it, right? As a general, uh, especially very Indian nature of uh, consumers to just like ignore all this random crap which happens saying this will never affect me and if like I I'm above all at all. If I have not done anything wrong, why yeah. should I be worried? That is the yeah. most Indian attitude yeah. of all yeah. attitudes, right? Exactly, right? So this is this is, doesn't concern me. Yeah. And that's the standard way in which uh, people react to all this. Uh, so the government seeing your data and no I, one cares. In yeah, India, yeah. very few people really care yeah. about privacy. Can I also say though, I mean like that might not be an irrational kind of perspective to take on this stuff, right? I mean like just from... Uh, uh, yeah, I understand privacy as a thing and I get the importance of it, right? But uh, so one of the analogies that I keep hearing about privacy is that, you know, when we talk about uh, protecting ourselves, right? That's what we're looking right, at, right? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is that if there is a high-end motivated hacker looking to get you, not a damn thing you can do about it. Exactly. And so is it really, does it really make sense to, like, you know, you got to kind of evaluate the how reason much. for that is because you partake in letting him do that so easily, right? But Be- are you going to stop? Like every guy, every, every, every Android app out there pretty much asks you for your SMS, your camera mm-hmm. access yeah. and, and tons of stuff just for some free. Using the app. Yeah. yeah. Just because. Yeah. And uh, most people just give it at the uh, blink Without of the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But I mean, are you going to stop using those apps? I'm not going to start the, exactly. Yeah, so that. that's, that's, I think what these sort of personal attack stories bring to light sort of, and maybe hopefully is that, Hey, you are not immune. Uh, this can happen to yeah. you. If it can happen to the next guy, it can happen to you. And uh, maybe it'll change people's attitudes towards. Uh, I don't know, this. man. I really don't. Because I mean, the, the way I approach privacy on, on the internet, right, is I assume there is none. 
The, yeah. the way I look at it is that anything I put on the internet, and by the internet, I'm being pretty broad. I even mean WhatsApp and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah What yeah. I'm saying, if I'm going to put anything down on those kind of a platform, it's something that I got to be okay with being in public. Yeah, right. granted, I don't want everything to be out there. But if it is, I got to be okay with it. If not, I shouldn't be using the platform that way. Right. I'm actually taking it a step further. So mm-hmm. I believe uh, I don't document anything which I don't want shared. So yeah. I don't shoot a picture. I don't shoot anything. Uh, which I don't want out. Uh, so I assume that anything I write in any format to any friend. Like even on notes on your phone? Anything. Anything. Anything can go public. Wow. That's the yeah. level of paranoia I follow. That's true. Because, you know, there's no protection. Uh, yeah. Recently you had, uh, you know, um, I think television anchors, uh, uh, you know, mail server hacked. Right. And they got, you know, a Twitter password. Right. Uh, all of us immediately got 2FA, mm-hmm. you know, two, two-factor authentication done for our Facebook, our, you know, Twitter, our right. email. You know, that's about, you know, Even the first two week F- of call. Even 2FA was hacked, by the way. You, yeah. uh, if you guys read about how... Uh, how do they manage that? How, the phone even, no, so, uh, yeah, no, even right? S7, uh, SS7, which is the f- SMS backbone... Uh, can oh. also be hacked. Anything can be so hacked. See, the thing is, the yeah, you just reduce the probability, yeah, you, I guess. You, you, you know, you, just be more safe and try your best. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I heard a great analogy, right? Uh, walking down the road is generally safe. You're going to do it, right? But if ninjas attack you, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, it's the same kind of thing, right? Right. Uh, over here, I mean, like, you know, you're generally safe on the internet because honestly, everything I do on the internet is so damn boring. Who gives a shit, right? I mean, like, nobody cares about what I am doing on this. But if you're talking about, uh, but if somebody comes after me, and I do, like, you know, my hygiene is good. I use a password, pro- I use a password log uh, software. Uh, I use two-factor authentication in most places. My hygiene is generally good. But if one of these guys wants to come after me, yeah, exactly, I'm done. Exactly. I, I mean, like, you know, there's just no way. Because, I mean, you have to use the reminder questions and you have to use all that stuff. And all that stuff is socially engineered like this. I mean, like, you call my mom and ask her, hey, what was your uh, maiden name? She'll tell you what her maiden name was. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, exactly. No, so social engineering, you can say social engineering is a whole different, uh, I mean, that's a very purposeful attack done uh-huh. on you, right? right. Uh, but even the the first thing we spoke about, the whole machines reading your data, right, and how, yeah. how all of that together can be used to not just hack you just for money, uh, but pretty much control your entire existence because most of our existence is now online. Yep. Yep. Whatever is not online is... It's a pain. Uh, Why is, is it not online? Exactly, right? So <laughs> if everything eventually gets online, all of that can be taken away from you. So what do you have in reality? Yeah. Like your house, your whole cash. No, eventually <laughs> I think, you know, most of us, you know, the paranoia would reach such a level that we would not want any record. So a Snapchat actually works a lot better for me than Twitter because, you know, if I have one lakh fifty thousand tweets. Right. And, you know, you can pretty much read, my, you can predict my behavior in every possible scenario with that much data. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely true. So it, it's and really you can scary. be called out for them after yeah, yeah, years yeah, and yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's Especially a, if you've become president. Yes, in which case, but then you got to stop saying stupid shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but who knows what Girish said <laughs> five years ago. I don't think Girish has ever said anything as stupid as has come out. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. I'm not going to say anything which is potentially going to be defamatory or incriminating in any way. So. <laughs> wow, he has like a legal disclaimer. Yes, right? he does. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm that careful. You know, no, no, no. no I, don't I think, think we are. The, you know, you're trained to be that way. So yeah, I, you have to. No, you have to. You have to. You, you have to be aware of what you're putting out in these platforms, and you got to be. Uh, you have to know that. You know, I mean, like at some point in time, if you, uh, it's just a losing game, right? So you have to play the game you're playing, and that game to me is one where you protect your privacy by being private. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But it's also today's day and age. I don't see how you can be. So private, especially let's say if, you know, we're entrepreneurs and we try to encourage being entrepreneurial, one aspect of that is being social, being outward, being able to connect with people, Right. uh, which is the exact opposite of being a recluse and being private. So how do you really achieve that? Because otherwise... I don't know that these are two things that can be achieved at the same time, but you got to find that balance. The more we are trying to encourage people to take risks and take uh, take on this entrepreneurial spirit, uh, we're actually also, uh, you know, leading them to a possible... I I think awareness about how not to make mistakes and trying your best to right. uh, keep uh, private things private is the best you can do but like you said if someone's out to get you 
uh, you have to be you. prepared just, for just one angle uh, actually if you look at it at a higher level uh, it's not really changed between online and offline so earlier stalking used to happen more offline because uh, you were not having a you know digital footprint so it was happening offline right so it's just happening online now right uh, earlier defamation was happening offline and you would right. defame somebody in a speech in a thing now you're defaming somebody on twitter or writing a post and defaming somebody so it's just that the platform has changed but the action to hurt somebody par uh, equation uh, insult whatever was happening offline or one on one or in a public gathering yeah. that's moved online but I it's just become more it's, easier it's, it's, it is it. easier yeah. I, i think that's a big part of it too right the yeah. fact that it's so easy and it's semi anonymous Yes. So, you know, I mean like it's not yeah. completely anonymous, anonymous, but I mean it could be, but I mean like generally you don't care if somebody with a Twitter egg is trolling you, you don't really care about that. Right. Right? Abusing yeah, anything. Exactly. Just... Like, you don't care about that, right? But if it is somebody who is a name that you have heard before or you who's been around your your various social media presences, right. then at that point in time it becomes a little tougher to kind Because of be so sanguine of, about uh, that. Because then you know yeah. your reputation sort of yeah. uh, comes on the line. Yeah. 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 No, so I think uh with It's something of a it's something of a sore uh, topic. I'm sure we're going to keep coming back to this over and over again because yeah. this feels to me like one of the topics that we're going to talk about a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and the way and things are going, it's it's a weekly. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, I think uh, one of the things which also comes out, especially with the uh, kind of personal attacks we're reading about, is also uh, how little you know about people around you uh, yeah, yeah. and your closest circles. I mean, uh, people can. Absolutely. I have was, different lives. Uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday. We haven't he's my closest friend. We haven't seen each other in a month and a half. I mean like you know, he's my closest friend, but it's just vacation was there for him and I was busy with something. And we haven't seen each other in a month and a half. So I mean like when your closest friend and it's this doesn't feel like we haven't seen each other forever, but you know what I mean? It, it's so when people you're this close to you spend this little time with, how do you really know anybody? Exactly. You feel like you're in touch with everyone because of the online mediums yep. but are you really like Not. you don't know what's going on in someone else's head what his personal life outside of interacting with you is like what his work is yep. like you you rarely know so i think uh, it that's also that's a it, yeah, human but, behavior thing which i think we are uh, we're leading people to a lot all of these guys who live who are twitter eggs probably mm-hmm. have decent friend circles and yeah. have however horrible they might be online they might be yeah very nice people, yeah. Nice people with in families person, and kids right? yeah. so yeah. i mean that's a common story you keep hearing yeah. about right yeah. when a troll was a uh, i mean like i keep when reading this exposed. yeah yeah when a troll is exposed he's like oh i'm so sorry i didn't believe that was uh, I, yeah, I, didn't i was thousand. just doing you know most people i think online uh, you know you don't even realize how yeah. harmful or how dangerous you are uh, with your actions you assume that it's some fun or yeah. uh, something that you're having something which is innocuous and actually you're causing serious harm which is hurting somebody exactly. at multiple levels so no, i think at some level all these people don't even think that anybody's going to read what they're writing so i mean like you know that is also i think part of it they just feel like there's no audience yeah, so it doesn't matter yeah they give it matter. a shot yeah they yeah. give it a shot that they But live vicariously the way the social media is constructed is everybody reads all their notifications man i mean like that's just the way this stuff is constructed no matter right. how like i i've seen like big stars like you know be scrolling for like 10 minutes through all their notifications yeah. they just want to see what's yeah. going on yeah. so i mean like you know people are kind of wired to know what people are saying about them right yeah, so, it's typical of our instagram things you know once you posted a picture for the next few hours you're every you know half an hour you're actually yeah. checking how many people have liked yeah. it and yeah. who's liked it and even though you're just flipping through it you just it's some sort of validation of sorts exactly yeah so i think it's a circle which people will uh, i mean they can't take themselves out of no, i they think they're going to keep posting stuff online they're going to keep saying things and and it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse <laughs> yes, i think uh, yeah when yeah. at least uh, when the machines take over uh, <laughs> they hopefully will do a better job of screening who's <laughs> worth who, who's allowed on twitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> So okay. yeah, yeah, so interesting. Cool. That's one of the things we uh, we were talking about earlier. Coming back around to again, since we're on the topic of social media and how people are not always what they seem. One of the biggest parts of social media is also the actual media and the brands that pretty much try to right. channelize and run. You know, are basically spending money on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were earlier talking about how. even now uh, there's so much happening on social media which is brand powered which is uh, brand influenced and this this whole 
subculture of being an influencer, influencer and yes. uh, people well, we're who we're talking to an influencer right yeah Kirish is an influencer man. but there's so many types of them right there are like people who with certain merit and then there are people who just like do yeah. stuff for money They're and influencers uh, for being influencers and uh, yeah. and you know push topics up make stuff trend and like if you ever catch on to a hashtag which is trending uh, yeah. you realize that there are tons and tons of fake accounts yeah. tons of people who have accounts just for the sake of doing stuff just doing like contests that. i think yeah. some people have contest accounts yeah. and they have normal accounts yeah, yeah so, so that's the whole other side of how uh, how the brands are basically either leveraging i don't know if it's really leveraging or misutilizing how easy it is to be uh, push your brand on social media what do you, what do you is, think yeah this, yeah, is, this, this is, is my your, favorite this topic this is your and, thing right yeah, i mean like this is my favorite topic thing. and you know i've taken it up uh, quite a few times on twitter as well so i've been on all the sides so i've been a brand uh, which uh, has tried to promote uh, so i've tried to be as legitimate as possible uh, i've been uh, a media vehicle for brands where i've convinced brands on how to go about their social media thing plus i've been an influencer in quotes uh, where brands have approached me and saying hey you're you know fitness brand running brand right. whatever related brand so what i've felt uh, is that uh, you know taking each scenario so as an influencer first time you say that hey i want to follow the international guidelines which says disclosure that if i'm you know being paid for something i need to disclose that with a hashtag and hashtag but sp h- hashtag how much partner. of that is really followed so right? uh, so i've not been able to manage that with any brand so far yeah. so if i'm doing a activation where i'm talking you know doing a chat with them it's obvious that i'm engaging with the brand or i would say i've been invited by a brand so there's disclosure so i can yeah. manage that but for any activity where they want me to do specific stuff it's i've not managed that as yet right now i'll take the other picture as a media vehicle where i'm talking to brands so i've talked you know uh, in our space so I've spoken to automotive brands and technology brands where i've told them these are international brands so i've told them hey uh, we're doing this activity but uh, you know we're doing it in print we're doing it in social media but you know if we do this we need to put a hashtag and in most cases they've been more than receptive uh, so you obviously tell them that hey if we don't do that and we try to pimp it both you and i can get compromised right uh if it's exposed somebody says paid media somebody says something it can backfire mm. so you share that fear with them and they are more or less receptive now the third case where i am at the receiving end the problem is where i'm the brand when i'm you know trying to sign send my communication out and i am doing a activity with somebody uh, influencer so you actually tell them that hey you actually don't give them deliverables you say right. i, I want to do this and i can give you this and you do the way you want to do it right so if you want to disclose disclose don't disclose share right so you give them freedom and what i find with me or with even with my friends is that most people respect that and do a damn good job and they have total freedom to do what they want to do right and the brand actually gets delivered lot better and more organic uh, reach and traction but how often do you see that right because It's most rare. brands don't trust you to write yeah, your brands, own copy yeah. and yeah. to yeah, yeah. they have uh, they, they have, have so many people in so many layers right about a marketing manager has certain targets to meet and mm-hmm. the numbers guy wants numbers yeah because i think the matrix uh, the, the, the metric needs quality. to the metric needs to change from you know just numbers and you know trending topic to actual engagement you know mm-hmm. how many leads or how many engaged or you know conversations how many replies did you have to a discussion right. i think those parameters need to be given more weightage than but i that, would agree with that how how often does that happen that's it's so, I'm, I'm hoping it, it evolves. I, I think that does evolve to an extent, right? I mean, like people who we're talking to are interested in like engagement and stuff like that as right. a primary metric, more so than just uh, how much your reach is, right? They 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 really do see engagement as like the uh, more this, but that doesn't uh, preclude from the. Uh, the issue that you are still talking about right which is the declaration thing right that's still not uh, something that anybody i have been able to kind of yeah and i i think one of the reasons is because again right the brands see uh, they see a bunch of metrics when they see a campaign and i'm sure they look at one thing as hey can i how fast and how openly can i get this out there without people ignoring it and the moment someone see, see we're tuned to notice an ad so Uh, tuned to realize that hey this is an ad hence i must not take it seriously yeah i got that so the more you put it out as an ad the more it will get ignored no, and that's so, the insecurity no, of no, brand I, i'll, I'll so. share another example so once you establish reasonable credibility in your vertical so assuming it's a specialized vertical that person's talking about i know of a friend who's a food blogger and 
who cooks and everything so she's been able to manage that and where she puts a hashtag sp uh, for uh, the ones that she's uh, you know pimping right. and or commercially uh, gaining from right, right. so she's been able to do it so i'm there saying are, it just takes a little bit of effort there are even agency i know like a few agencies whose handles always say this is a promoted post and yeah, so on yeah. but again you have to achieve a certain level of maturity maturity and uh, i would say confidence for your person to do that whereas you have to be able to walk away from stuff which a lot of these people are not yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine if you're a 22 year old yeah. you know yeah it's it's yeah, good yeah, money so exactly, it's, it's yeah, quick so money it's you're, good you're getting paid 5000 bucks to do this tweet or who's going to walk away from exactly. that exactly and that's i think what has led to a lot of this uh, i wouldn't say corruption of uh, the social media but this is how it's happening and well, there are trends which right it is essentially payola man i mean like it is corruption i i mean like you know it might not be governmental corruption but it is in some way shape or form you are subverting the forces that we depend upon to kind of get our stuff uh, to get but, good content out there but let me ask you so this is for girish like as a again in the at the point where you were a brand what does the brand really achieve why do they always go back to the numbers game why do they go back to the fact that hey okay worst case scenario i need this to trend or i need these many rts is it the same carry forward of the television metric yeah so or- a part of it it's it's a bunch of things so one is obviously the legacy thing where you want to show numbers so mm-hmm. i compare i've spent so much money and i got so you know so many eyeballs were reached uh, using right. television i'm saying digital is cheaper and more effective social media is another uh, you know platform and i need to so you're comparing social media to uh, reach that you can manage with uh, facebook ads and other things and uh, you have uh, your web banner ads right. so you're actually comparing those metrics which is you know metric which is uh, sort of causing the confusion second is awareness most brand managers are not really literate in terms of uh, you know what is good for them so trending how does it help you Right. So creating buzz in a positive way is different, but if you're just trending, you know, so many people saw the trend. So how does it help your brand? As in, you know, what is the deliverable you are actually looking for? It's what uh, the CEO can see, right? It's like why they have these holdings at uh, on Narman Point, right? Yeah. Because the CEO C- sees it on yeah. the way there, yeah, right? CEO is right. one, and the second one is uh, when you present making a KRA presentation. Your global uh, dictate is that you know you have to spend ten percent of your budget on digital. and right. you know spending 10% of your budget on digital in india is very yeah. difficult so you are actually burning cash and what's what's uh, the baseline for that though i mean and i'm asking as a genuine like a consumer who sees like 100 ads a day probably mm-hmm. across so many mediums i look at uh, so much types of media i look at the like paper hoardings whatever mm-hmm. what's the baseline for just being bombarded with So most Something. of it uh, you ignore automatically, but yeah. the brands that register are the ones you're involved with. So if, uh, for example, Amit is uh, you know likes Coke, and he actually sees uh, aerated drink, he sees a new uh, cola flavored like Cuba cola. He it'll actually register right. because he is a consumer for that particular category. Even though it's not directly his product, it's in that same category. So that's the same reason why they say, "Hey, push a trend on Twitter," and yeah. maybe while he's checking Twitter, he'll you, see he'll a trend. Yeah, he'll get to know about the product. So one, you do a so for example, uh, one uh, without taking the name, uh, one phone brand uh, which newly entered a category right. did a very good buzz activation, low cost, cost them just the device, uh, which is something which people give at press conferences in you know CES. Right. So you know the engagement they got, the buzz was very good as a one-time thing. Right. So there are ways in which you can do a effective buzz activity. Uh, there is a, a brand which does uh, movie screenings. Right. So you know um, it, it's effective till a certain time, but if you stretch it, then it's sort of becomes a blind spot. Right. So everything has a shelf life, and some things which are effective in the short term. In the long term, you need you need They to may or may not outthink work. that. Yeah. yeah. Can I circle back to what you were asking earlier? I'd like to know what you think about that. When you were saying that ten percent of the advertising is digital, why is that ten percent? Why do you think ten percent is the number that's being kind of looked at right now, as in terms of digital budgets uh, in India? So, because uh, the global dictate uh, oh. would be usually what people tell us. So, I, I this is what brands when we interact with them for advertising, because right. we are we mainly interact with them for print advertising, right. and right. we say you know we can do digital stuff. as well so so what's the split that you think makes sense in terms of your reach right i mean like because th- does it track reach i mean like i've always thought that digital consumption in india far outpaces the spending 
No, so uh, the problem is there's a lot of excess. The the digital inventory is very very cheap it is. in India. It is. So the problem is that you don't really get quality reach right. which is available. So I- imagine if you're spending, you know, it's Facebook and uh, Google that mm-hmm. you're spending on. That's about eighty percent of the budget right. Right. burning. So if you are a t-shirt brand which is you know making. Uh, custom t-shirts right uh, you know the first thing you would say is hey use instagram use facebook and use google adwords so people searching for that now the problem is that once you use facebook you get the initial audience traction so you right. get this thing after a 6 month period so this a friend who, mm. a friend was running a t-shirt brand this is right. a live example after 6 months he's actually reaching the same audience right. and it stops being effective the right, roi right. just drops right. yeah. because they're not able to get new audiences for you Right. For that particular category, similar thing is what happens with Google. So once you get the initial search volume right. for these kind of categories, uh, it becomes very difficult to get a new. So unless additional. you are okay. actually able to get that audience and then keep them engaged and add new products and you know build the audience and then sort of milk them over a period of time. But is that a function of the product itself reaching its natural exactly, market saturation, yeah. or is that a function of the digital advertising space, or is that a function of the fact that? Uh, the digital space is different from the traditional space. So you got to keep coming up with new stuff to put up there, right? So I mean, it could be a function of that as well. It's the problem with audience. So even if you change the creatives, right. change the campaign, you're actually, the ROI just drops after six months. This, this, this is obviously but then that anic- means, anecdotal. But, but then that means that the audience is limited, right? Because if you're not able to yeah, reach out to exactly. a wider yeah, audience, yeah, yeah. then the audience is by definition limited. On digital, yeah. the audience so is So whereas limited. the same brand doing yeah. a Times treaties or, you know, similar thing right. uh, with some brand and actually getting um, bigger mainstream reach, right. actually, Actually, is able to get enough traction to get yeah. newer, really new audiences. Or if they're on like a in a brick or a and television store. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. So we have right, right right now in India, we have what two hundred and fifty million digital consumers. Yeah, out of a I billion, think, I think something yeah, like that. I think in that cell smartphone phones, population, three hundred million yeah. cell phones. Huh? Smart three hundred million yeah. smart, yeah. smart yeah. smartphones. Yeah. 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 So then that means that it's a third of the market. Uh, so digital only covers a third of the market, and that's where the gap is. Right. Yeah, and uh, what you are using it for. So, oh. m- problem is that most of them are using it for uh, WhatsApp. As right. a big chunk of them are using it for Correct. WhatsApp, Correct. which doesn't have any advertising, right. any communication. Man, they so, need to so the that. top three uh, top three numbers in uh, in smartphones Usage. is uh, for WhatsApp is okay. uh, around uh, two hundred million. Okay. okay. Uh, YouTube up okay. next is 180 million. Okay. Uh, and Facebook is I, between. I think Facebook is 100. And, no, oh. Facebook's like 100 million in India. They just got across so, 100 million like a couple of months ago. Yeah. No, I think it's in the same range. So these okay. are the top three apps okay. by numbers. Interesting. And uh, so you know, so YouTube is probably the only one. YouTube and Facebook are the only monetized. Correct, uh, right. versions whatsapp which is the leading uh, yeah. app is yeah. actually not hmm. not yet or so we believe you yeah. know because there's a lot of uh, cross pollination which is I'm coming sure. you know, a lot of interesting spam hmm. which actually talks about a useful thing but the website has lot many other things which right so it's it's uh, dark social uh, media marketing there's a lot of uh, so i got a message today from my landlady where it was uh, go to whatsapp.com slash colors because apparently there are new colors but the w of the whatsapp was the cyrillic w Wow. And so she just forwarded it to me and she's like, oh, this looks so cool. Take a look at it. And I was like, dude, this is not the right not thing. WhatsApp. But she sent it to 100 people. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. like, I'm guessing that's another. Yeah. And it's how brands are going to use, uh, you know, uh, manipulate yeah. WhatsApp. Because in India, you know, there's no, uh, you know, in the US, you have Facebook. Right. Which is amazing reach. Right. In India, it's WhatsApp. because It it's is WhatsApp. I would kill for a post API on WhatsApp right now. I swear to God, I would. I would kill a person if they would put one together. Because I mean, like in, in terms of how we want to distribute our content, right? Yeah. If we could distribute through WhatsApp with a post API, that would just make our life. Uh, WhatsApp does not allow you to automate it post, right? You have to post by through that app only. Right. Yeah, but I think maybe I'm sure. So there is this, uh, I remember reading one article where there's a news agency uh, which was uh, actually doing uh, uh, news distribution. News to WhatsApp. I, WhatsApp. That, I was on Pointer a couple so, of months ago. you know, that person is actually doing broadcast. Yeah. Right. So you could actually do a broadcast. So imagine if you have uh, all your details on the, on the PC right. and, you know, you actually do a broadcast uh, and every month, every day, you, you develop a sign up and I don't yeah. know. Those guys really became famous. But, the, the thing is that what he did was, see, the thing is he's a guy sitting in Bihar, right, doing a local newscast. For him to make 20,000 rupees a month is a good kind of chunk of change, right? right. Compared to what his other opportunities are. Mm-hmm. Uh, for us to be able to scale content delivery through WhatsApp, you can't do it on that kind of a manual basis. 
Mm-hmm. What, what this guy was literally doing was like, hey, you send me your money. I'll add you to my WhatsApp distribution mm-hmm. list. I'll send you a message so that you can then add me to your phone book so that you will receive my videos. Right. And then after that, he was using the WhatsApp, uh, the, the, the WhatsApp broadcast. group, the broadcast list. Right. So that's a very manual process. It can work if you have a thousand subscribers paying you a hundred rupees a month, mm-hmm. you know, but it's not something that you can do if you want to get into like a scalable kind of model. For a scalable model, you need obviously some sort and the of effort matter. versus uh, return. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. My so. thing is that I'm sure that it's going to happen someday. But, but this yeah. was a uniquely Indian. It was. It was amazing. Yeah. I, 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 this I, is total Jugard. Uh, absolutely. When I started looking at this, I'm like, hey, why are we not doing this? Come on, let's find out. We got to figure out how we're doing this. And then exactly. I saw how he was doing it. I'm like, ah, okay, that's a little tough. Exactly. But again, coming back to the fact that this is how why the India story is the smartphone story yeah, and how is. smartphones are all over the place for yeah, everyone absolutely uh, these are the ways in which uh, people are figuring out workarounds yeah, yeah. Uh, India is a smartphone country right? we're and, not a PC country and yeah and, and coming back to the point about social media and paid media Mm-hmm. Uh, we are still in the early days of uh, media and brands just trying to milk this entire ecosystem yeah with uh, whatever they can do uh, before any official guidelines or rules or processes really come into place. The other thing which was, you know, which we discussed earlier as well was, uh, you know, is uh, ASCII kind of uh, governing body workable in our thing? Right. So people who are stakeholders within the space of some kind actually get together and say, hey, let's have some basic guidelines and all digital agencies which are sort of accredited Right. So in, you know, for example, in the print space, we have accredited and unaccredited agencies. So maybe we could have digital agencies which actually sign up to a body right. and say we would adhere to these guidelines. And, you know, maybe we could I, all uh, sit together and actually say that. Well, yeah, that's, that's, I think, so brands probably company. know that this is coming, but they're choosing to ignore this because of the, again, like you said, the um, impact and the size you know, my, know, of digital. My bigger fear is, you know, the government coming to play. So, uh, about, yeah. you know, in, for example, the print media is governed by, uh, you know, all of us have to register our titles with the body called RNI, right. the Registrar of Newspapers. So we are governed. So if something defamatory is written, the publisher and editor goes to jail, yeah. the printer goes to jail, you know, there's some wow. control. Now, imagine if they start doing that for websites. Yeah. That right. Any website has to be registered with the RNI kind of body. They tried, right? Yeah, they, the, tried, they, they tried. They tried and then, you know, you had... Uh, the, it was just like, are you insane? I mean, yeah, like, I can open 10 practice, websites yeah. today. Yeah. So, right. you know, so but tomorrow, the government actually, you know, wants to control social media. Right. Like, because, you know, uh, there are WhatsApp rumors which spread a riot. Right. Uh, you know, we've, uh, instead of clamping down on internet, uh, you know, for example, Kashmir, Maoist territories, we... The only thing, only solution the government has is that, you know, shut, shut down internet right. you know, and shut down internet is one, shut yeah, down right. WhatsApp or Facebook is another because, you know, right. how do you control WhatsApp? And right. I don't blame the government because it's just unless the stakeholders within the industry actually do something good, uh, the government will overnight come and clamp down yeah, on and, you. And we anyway look at China for inspiration, which is pretty much uh, exactly <laughs> this kind of stuff. I uh, honestly, I can't see how... Uh, what you know the issue that you're talking about right which is uh rioting and stuff like that that ha- or basically false rumors essentially yeah, inciting pa- audience on on whatsapp how that fake happened. news how is that possibly going to be solved by an ascii like body because again whatsapp is p2p and it is encrypted right right so i mean like how does anybody help you Unless you do these stupid rules which they put in place like now you no longer be a group admin on WhatsApp because you're going to get screwed if oh, something yes. happens on yeah, your group. Yeah. Right? And, uh, without putting these, kinds of, yeah, without yeah, these so kinds of dumb rules, I don't see how you a can... A funny side effect of that was actually that most groups I'm in, everyone became admin. admin. That's what happened in my groups too. It's everyone, like, the admin everybody. made everyone admin, admin. Yeah. and say, hey, you're all <laughs> <you're really> responsible. <laughs> so... But, but, you know, I mean, like, I, I still, uh, my, my, this was, I, I don't see how that, you know, I mean, like, how we can prevent that kind of stuff happening, right? Because that's the free, I mean, like, you know, uh, everything has a good side and a bad side. And that's the downside to freedom of speech, right? If you have freedom of speech, sometimes you're going to have bad speech. Right. So, I mean, uh, and... The ways that you could possibly control that kind of thing get so draconian, right? Because, I mean, like, well, all of a sudden, now you need the Great Wall of India mm-hmm. or Great Firewall of India, right? I mm-hmm. mean, that's the only way that this happens if WhatsApp passes through, like, some sort of man in the middle. Mm-hmm. That's the only way that you could... No, but I think that will totally prohibit the... I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane to just think yeah, of that. Yeah, so, I mean, like, then how does... How do we do this, right? I mean, like, how does a body help... And a body without any kind of governmental uh, authority to back it up. 
is going to be fairly toothless because again, it's so easy to start. It's like ASCII. It's not easy to set up a actual advertising agency, get contacts going with the guys who do media releases and stuff like that on a, on the offline level. Setting up a digital agency means what? One guy sitting in like social, uh, sitting in the social no, offline no. and just like, you know, yeah. running campaigns for people. No, no, right. So, yeah. So obviously you can't govern those. So there are similar, yeah. ca- similar is the case with, uh, there are a lot of agencies which release ads and, you know, uh, which are not accredited. Right. So what I'm saying is that the regulation would be only for uh, the ones who are the bigger agency. So if I'm, if it's a bigger brand or right. you're more credible brand, you would want to work with only registered agencies with this body because, uh, you know, you can't really have things going wrong. So yeah. what I'm saying is at least the MNCs, the Indian corporates right. who have some governance standards would prefer to work with this. So it'll actually be a selling point for these agencies uh, if they're registered with this, uh, you know, non-governmental body. Uh, the reason is if you don't do it now at some point in time the government is going to act right. the reason why we have so much freedom in advertising and uh, you know creativity coming in is because ASCII is able to do a good job as in there is they've simplified it they have an app there's so many things they've actually moved with the times right. uh, so except for a couple of Indian uh, players with some political backing most people almost everybody even those who are not really registered with ASCII in any form uh, actually follow their dictate. Right. So there is some sanctity to their order, you know, but there are people who can say, hey, I have nothing, you know, I'm, who are you? Right. In, right. Take me to court if you want, you know. And proving in court obviously is not practical, time consuming. No, know. no one wants to uh, go to an Indian court ever, especially the <laughs> MNC. If you have a choice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it, it's, it's interesting times if uh, something like this uh, does get set up and uh, start regulating how influencers yeah. go about doing no, their it, influencing. It, it would be. I mean, like, I, I, I worry about it, right? I mean, like, see, so generally speaking, I'm a guy who's like, I don't try and look at the theoretical harm or something. I look for where's the actual harm. But the, and I hate using the word slippery slope, but this slope is so damn slippery that, right. you know, I mean, like, uh, uh, yeah, we approach this with the best of intentions that, yeah, you know, what we want is we want people to know when something is an ad. Correct. But, you know, to let regulation in at this point over here, mm-hmm. how fast that moves into other areas of this kind of thing? So, I'll give you an example of what's happened. Uh, so, I'll give you Instagram example and I'll tell you the YouTube example from advertising point of view. So, YouTube first. Uh, so, YouTube, there were a lot of uh, vbloggers who were actually doing advertising uh, right. through their thing without paying any money to right. YouTube. Right. Then YouTube said that, you know, X, Y, Z and, you know, your revenues are removed or, right. you know, advertising revenue won't be given to you. You'll be your uh, channel will be blacklisted. So when it starts hurting the channel, uh, when you do surrogate advertising and that kind of advertising, uh, they'll clamp down. Right. So currently what's happening is you are incentivizing uh, Instagrammers because right. Instagram is really the rage. Twitter is nothing compared right. to Instagram. Everything's happening on Instagram. Right. Numbers are higher. It's easier for people. Pictures yeah, are easier than words. Are, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so what's happening is you're hurting Instagram by not doing promoted Instagram posts. Right. Okay. And you're trying to bypass that by hiring influencers, doing these activations. Correct. So it's hurting. So once it starts hurting and we're talking about Facebook and Google, they know how to clamp down on you and, you know, mm-hmm. squeeze you so that right. you automatically start paying. So most of us have actually started paying Facebook to do promoted posts instead of hiring influencers to do it. Right. So I'd hire one influencer and do a promoted post instead of hiring 10 influencers to actually get that voice out or get that traction in. Right. So it's already happening in Facebook and uh, YouTube. So same thing would happen in other cases. The, the platform has the maximum power. Right. They can squeeze anybody. They'll say you violated terms of use and blacklist you. The counterpoint to this is that if you have your own organic reach, which is strong enough, why would you want to play the pay the yeah, platform right so in their own right most people who are doing this they were, they're just breaching the platform made their terms of service I and mean, it's it's not that it's unfair that they were doing this they had the following they could reach an audience and they were pimping uh, whatever so brand. I'll squeeze you so you know exactly platform, so platform this is, this is more of a business uh, yeah so, so I'm saying that, that tactic, is going to happen right? so, so eventually the business tactic can squeeze you right. so I'm saying if you are decent and if you are fair mm. my thing is if you run it as a fair business practice even as an individual the platform will never abuse it the platform is forced to abuse when you try to take 
advantage all right. the revenue away right. Right. and they giving you first of all it's a free platform so many other things are there finally they also have to make money right so if you try to take all their money away you know they going to fight no, back so facebook so i've definitely done that right i mean like there is no organic reach yeah. on pages anymore yeah yeah there you, is you get uh, organic reach on personal posts but on pages you get nothing exactly and if you post from the same page all the time then you don't even get organic reach on your personal posts yeah. Yeah. right yeah. so i mean uh, that they have definitely climbed and down it's really it. cheap so what i'm saying yeah, is I that know. facebook you know boosting yeah. the post is really effective I do like Facebook owns Instagram, so imagine the same translation yeah. will actually happen. I'm actually doing that, right. and I can see that Instagram is my next thing. Yeah. Twitter is damn expensive, so you know it's right. just Twitter. Also, is weird, man. When it comes to marketing stuff, I don't. I feel like Twitter's audience. I I mean, like overrated actually. <laughs> <laughs> overrated and uh, overpriced at the moment. Overpriced, yeah. overrated, and very uh, Twitter audience is on Twitter. They're not anywhere else. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to you? What I mean? Uh, what I'm saying? The people who are on Twitter, they do their stuff on Twitter. Yeah. Right. But people who are not on Twitter, they never see that. And at I all. think that's the biggest. You just like yeah. laid down Twitter's biggest, <laughs> biggest problem. It is. Yeah. It is a problem. Uh, and I don't think they've figured it out. No, either. they haven't. I, I, so I was listening or reading. I don't even remember anymore. I listen to and read so much of this tech stuff. Right. So I was reading an interesting article. It was a reading thing uh, where they were talking about the metrics Twitter uses to kind of uh, promote itself and how that's all completely messed up. Right. The most important people in the world are on Twitter. Right. right, all the CEOs of the country of the world are on Twitter. All the major journalists of the world are on Twitter. All the major politicians of the world are on Twitter. Why the hell are they talking about active users? Yeah, who cares? Exactly. My thing is make it exactly. a paid model where yeah. you know um, the power users yeah. get this thing. Just use a subscription model, isn't? That's something which we've been talking for like last two or three years since the time they hit. You know, roadblock in terms of numbers. Right. Right. So no. you know, try the subscription model. Yeah. Give them more features, more analytics, exactly. more whatever, and you know, work. I think Twitter needs to. I mean, we've been saying this uh, every year uh, that Twitter needs to figure this out, and now they're before they die because the biggest fear is yeah. don't die, as in you know, I'll pay I, for it. I, don't, I don't, don't think they die. Right. A worst case scenario, I think, like some uh, some kind of like private equity fund buys them and sells them for parts, basically, because which the, is even worse. No, the difficult part of Twitter, the technology of developing Twitter, was a lot tougher in two thousand six, two thousand seven than it is today. Right. I mean, like, the technology behind it's Twitter to today, today yeah. is not as uh, complex complex yeah. as it is yeah. so uh, the private equity guys who would come in would probably just like kind of slash everything but their tech budget and right. just let it run on the basis of something like that because there's a profitable model there yeah. I mean there's absolutely a profitable model behind Twitter right. it's just a question of they want to be Facebook and they want to be Instagram and they want to beat all these guys and when you're being competitive um, that, that's not who you are yeah. you know I mean I, that you evolved into a different platform all Right. my two cents yeah. funnily enough uh, again uh, since we're talking about the same social media and the same uh, kind of audiences, I think one of the other topics uh, we were touching upon was the fact that the basis of this, all of this has come around because of the massive telecom explosion that's yeah. been happening, right? right. Uh, with data becoming suddenly the biggest, uh, you can say, consumption element of a of the telecom yeah, absolutely telecom my business boom. is entirely based on the fact that we mm-hmm. have easy availability of data on mobile phones right now. and it's getting cheaper yeah. it's it's getting more people have access to it more people are using just data and, and very little of everything else uh, and how while the telcos were sort of sidelined all these years uh, as key players in the market it was all about the phones apps and so on uh, with the new move of MVNOs mm-hmm. coming into India, which we never had before, right? Uh, we might see some interesting developments yeah, there yeah, from, I'm very, from telcos. I'm very suddenly. excited about MVNOs. I think MVNOs... So the thing with MVNOs is they basically allow uh, mobile plans or operators or whatever to work in more niche categories. Right. Right. The, the thing is right now, the five, six major operators we have they're all kind of a one size fits all kind of deal, right? right. So it is uh, the plans that you get for them are built for the widest possible audience. But right. what about like this guy who works in Bombay but whose family is in Bihar and who goes to Bihar for three months a year? Right. Why not be able to create a calling circle for him which is Bombay and Bihar? Right. Right. What about at the high end, right? Right now, if we want to get uh, a mobile plan, then the plans that we get will be 5 GB of data and then after that you have to get additional packs and stuff like that. Right. I like a plan which is just kind of meter me, right? Just meter me and tell me how much I've used at the end of the month and bill me accordingly and just charge me, 
right? Instead of yeah. having me call you once a month, ke, hey, or, my data is getting over. Can you add or it? Or be and, only data. Like, yeah, or be an only data. Like plan. most plans yeah. still have like 100 SMS. Like exactly. I do not use even 10. Yeah. I think uh, the, the the tourism space is what uh, would really benefit from MVNOs yeah. because most of us when we travel abroad we want a pure data pack. Correct. Right. Okay, and I would assume that somebody who's coming into India would want a similar thing. Yeah, absolutely. Even though it might be more expensive, you know, logically we want we don't want to be hassled with anything else other than data. Right. So there'll be many users like that, and especially developed country coming yeah. to a developing country. I think that is one market which could be looked at. Yeah. The second I feel is uh, customer service. Yeah. You know, most of us don't like waiting. No. We are used to Uber coming to you in five minutes, and you want your guy to pick up on the fourth ring. So imagine if somebody who's H and I and can get really good service. Yeah. You would just move Dude, for service. I pay right now 1800 bucks a month, right? If I could get a single person on a call without going through their tree, I'd pay 3000 a month. I swear to God, I'd do it. <laughs> if I did not have to go through the mobile operator's tree, I'd pay 1000 bucks a month just for that. Okay, since you mentioned 1800 I used to pay 1800 right. a month. I think I pay for the exact same thing. I think I pay about 900 bucks now. Okay. So you should talk to your mobile operator. I should talk to my mobile Coming operator. Coming back, and that brings me to my next point. <laughs> you know, and, uh, this is also prepaid versus postpaid, right? right. Yeah. Imagine if you're a prepaid consumer it's probably for the same less provider. Uh -huh. No, it would be 350 rupees. Yeah. yeah. I, Bec and you would get 28 gig. I, I, you know what? I changed my plan about four months ago, so I'm pretty sure I'm on a. Uh, I think no you should talk Trust to them me. again. Yeah. You say, yeah. I'm going to port. Okay. You just do that, send that SMS, uh, 1900, whatever. Right. Send that SMS, trust me, you'll get what you want. Okay. But you have to send that SMS. for. So, for, which right. brings me back to the point where I, again, personally, I think while an MVNO as a product is great right. because, hey, it's a more versatile. We never thought of telecom this way. We think of telecom as an infrastructure. Right. We don't think of it as a product, as right. a package which can be tuned to me and so on. Uh, but at the same time, because... We're so fast growing a nation with so many numbers. The guys who are already here, the ones who are the big entrenched ones, are highly competitive. They are. I'm, if not the cheapest, one of the cheapest in the world. Yep. And uh, it's only getting better and better for the consumer. So do we as people really care? Like you, you just said, like you pay 1800 and you probably could pay lesser, but... You don't care. No, no. Now that I know so, that I can pay less, I will go back and pay less. Uh, I'm not going to let that slide. But it's really, it's already, it's already, no, the, it's, the bar is so low right is. now in terms of how. But see, price is just one aspect of experience, right? I mean, like in terms of the relationship that you have with your mobile operator, price right. is one aspect. Right. There are other aspects that are not satisfactory. Right. Right. I mean, like my coverage. Uh, so I work in car, I live in town, right? There are three spots on my way home where I will lose network every time, no matter what. Oh, yes, yes. I will lose network at the start of the ceiling. I will lose network on Wally Sea Face and I will lose network near Hajjali. No matter what, I am going to lose network at these three spots. Right. So there are service issues that are there. There are customer service issues as we are talking about, right? That's another. Way. So there are a lot of different right. uh, ways that I interact. Stop sending me and stop adding stupid damn caller back tunes on my phone. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, stop, stop nickel and diming me on this stuff. There right. are a lot of different aspects in terms of how we interact with our mobile operators. I don't want to use Airtel Wallet. Please stop asking me to do it. So if there are ways to improve the uh, experience on a holistic level, then I mean, like, yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I, I think that works. I think, I think, uh, so, so, I, so I think we agree that there is a market for MVNOs, yes. especially on the service as in customer, think, uh, customer experience. So on the yeah. customer like, experience. you know, most of us would like uh, Amex or something is purely because of just customer service. Exactly. Things getting resolved quickly, escalation, everything. Right. So you, you're taking a product also for the service. You're paying a premium yep. just to get better service because right. yep. service is becoming a premium. Because after a while, I don't mind paying 500 or 100 bucks or 1000. Yeah. yeah, I think it, so. You know, yeah. till it then it's below 1000, you know, I'm, I'm not even thinking. Right. It ties in with the same thought behind the kind of service we look at from cab operators, yeah, right? Absolutely. It's, it's the same thing. We are the cab is the commodity now. Yep. I mean, we know. Uh, every yeah. guy is going to be the same and so on but the service when is where you look at yeah. escalation yeah. Dis right. dispute right. resolution right. that's the security safety all those things now yeah. I think we are moving out oh, out, out of, of that price yeah. being the only thing right. you know we right. sort of evolved as uh, consumer category so yeah. well, well, some still, of, most of us well, price I'm, still drives a lot of it but I mean like price will probably drive 80% of the market for the foreseeable future right but at the same time the 20% of it's India is enough. a massive market yeah. Correct. where if you're looking at more of an experiential kind of thing rather than price being your primary 
uh, reasoning for doing something. Right. And again, since this is, after all, it's opening up to the private players, yeah. uh, people who are, uh, and a whole bunch of them, I yeah. think 61. And, and see, that's the other thing to consider, them. right? I mean, like, uh, if you want to bid on Spectrum, right. you got to be Airtel. You got to be Reliance. You got to be Aircel. You got to be Idea. Right. These are the people who can bid on Spectrum, right? I mean, like, some guy who wants to start a small little network in Bombay for, like, you know, the richy riches, he's not going to be able to bid on Spectrum. Mm -hmm. Or some dude who wants to set up, like, a data-only network, he's not going to bid on Spectrum. Yeah, but in most cases abroad, it's the number five and number four player who's yeah. excess, who, you know, who's actually who's selling it really cheap. Yeah. Or somebody to make a business out of it, you yeah. know, a big bazaar could actually do it. A Pepsi could do it, you yeah. know. Imagine yeah. having with kids. You have a Pepsi millennial, uh, you know, phone number, card, yeah. custom numbers, whatever. As in, imagine yeah. you could do it for, you know, young kids. Yep. And you, you know, Kingfisher could do it. You yeah, know, Pepsi could do it. Like, anybody who has a brand experience of any kind could actually and has yeah. captive audience, cult okay. following or whatever following. Yeah, no, it makes sense. MVNOs can make, uh, MVNOs work a lot in those kinds of areas, yeah, right? Yeah. Virgin is like Virgin, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just like that. Yeah, and I think... Uh, the data part is going to play a big role as well. I yeah. think, uh, like, even abroad, I think with stuff like Google Fi. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Google Fi works which, brilliantly in India. My yeah, brother brought it, it over here and it works brilliantly. Exactly. I mean, like, just perfect. It's like a seamless layer yeah. across multiple networks. Yeah. No network switching, nothing. It well, just, no, so they, he could only, so the thing is when you come to, when you bring it to India, you have to use Wi-Fi calling or the internet calling. Right. You can't do like the straight call. Yeah, yeah. Data is yeah. data is it's all data driven, yeah. It's it's data roaming. Yeah, it's, it's international data, data roaming yeah. at a flat price. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's which for a traveling businessman is based just like, yeah, awesome. seriously, I'd love that. Yeah. So there's tons of possible models which yeah. an MBNO could really yeah. uh, try and make True. a good business on. True. That's interesting because uh, again, since we mentioned government in the previous conversation, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to see the government actually allow this. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm sure it will come with its own few riders. So, I mean, there are uh, already... Some things which yeah. they may or may not allow you to do. No, but I think they and would take some share of the thing for you to register. You'd have certain... There would be... So, th there would be some extra revenue. So, I'm right. sure they're, you know... Right. It's just extra revenue for them. It, it, I, I right. don't think they're looking at anything. Yeah, beyond. and again, I mean, like the spectrum's going to come from the air, uh, Airtels and the ideas and the geos of the world, right? right. I mean, that's where the spectrum's right. going to come from. So, that's how the infrastructure is going to be built. So, I don't right. think they would really care too much. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. No, so uh, coming back to, I think we had a few more uh, topics to talk about. No, yeah. so with the government pretty much uh, stepping into the post-demonetization <laughs> post demonetization or even otherwise, I think uh, with the government trying to step into so many places where businesses typically had a little more of a free hand, uh, one of the most noticeable has actually been the banking space, right? Where mm -hmm. at least banks, which were highly regulated, played safe, then came the whole fintech players who tried to do some interesting stuff with fintech based on just pure tech and not relying on banking infrastructure in any way whatsoever. But now you have the government coming up with uh, stuff like Beam and UPI and pretty much saying, uh, hey, use us. We are the official interface versus uh, it's sort of sidelining private players a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... How, how do you think this affects? Yeah, so I, I think uh, there, there have been a lot of uh, initial hiccups because I think it was pushed prematurely, yeah. security concerns, uh, people have, some people have burnt fingers, there have been some transactions uh, which have gone rogue, I love uh, some money were, siphoned off. They were boasting about the fact that they have a 5% failure rate. I thought that was amazing. Nandan mm -hmm. Nilekini at some, some conference somewhere said that 95% of the transactions are working perfectly fine. That's crazy. I, I was just amazed it's, it's when I heard money. that. It's my money. It's my money. I was money. amazed when I heard that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I think there are, uh, as in, leave aside the issues that a normal average uh, Indian user would have. Even from the savvy audience, uh, there are a lot of concerns. But the responsibility now is on the user. So, I think uh, the latest guidelines, what they've said... Uh, is that Beam is not responsible. So you can't take Beam to court in case things go wrong or banks are not taking liability for uh, uh, transactions, uh, you getting defrauded. Right. So they're capping the liability and those kind of things. So I'm saying those are not very uh, inspiring moves right. uh, to you know build because banking is, it's your money, hard-earned money, which is with somebody and you're trying to move that. So that is one uh, issue which, which needs to be taken out. Trust needs to be built. Uh, the other one is that, you know, most of the numbers from what we read in the news reports is forced downloads. So banks have been given targets to actually do downloads right. and this thing. All that is fine. You know, initially, India, we right. need the push. Education is not there. 
so that's all good but uh, you know i remember reading some number where you know most of it is transaction query so right. you want to know your payment exactly. money balance right. and exactly it's not really transacting people are just trying out i think uh, i think uh, this is the one aspect of tech i think we have been the most reluctant to adopt especially i think mm. why we talk about india being a massive fintech opportunity i think indians have been fairly reluctant to sort of move away from traditional banking channels yeah. i think that's the one thing when it comes to money in the bank they really trust that bank branch and yeah. store yeah. and like they feel that's physically no, somewhere i think we're just as a culture we're not adventurous or we're not experimental with how we use money right i, mm-hmm. I mean uh, yeah so I, I remember reading something a while ago there's like there're 10 debit cards for every credit card in this country right you know yeah. because and the numbers have gone up after demonetization yeah. so but you know but the most usage Use, of no, those usage credit- has uh, gone up as well yeah. so debit yeah, card yeah, usage yeah, has gone but up but usage has gone up where debit cards are still used the most right. to withdraw cash yeah, yeah. they're not used for at point at, of sale point of sale yeah. no even point of sale transactions i think recently post demonetization they have increased they've, 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 they've taken they've, over debit card transactions uh, sorry, credit card transactions. Uh, debit so, card, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, the point so it's finally also. becoming bigger, but it's still you know, for the numbers that have been churned out. Right. Uh, you know, you're paying a fee to Visa or Master, and uh, you know, so maybe Rupee can actually make the transaction cost zero. I don't know. But they're not, right? You said that there is a yeah. cost to that. No, so that was regarding the Beam uh, app. Oh, so when, okay. When you do the USSD queries, right? You are actually charged. It's it's a nominal charge, but. Uh, yeah, you know, you're still being charge. charged. Yeah, charge is charged. And so there is a transaction cost, which was a little disturbing. I, I, you know, right. Maybe we so need to the, encourage and subsidize it. I, I know that they have merchant costs, right? I mean, like if you're a merchant accepting Beam payments, then I know that there is a cost for that as a merchant. But there should not be uh, costs if you are doing any kind of transaction to person to person transaction or transaction no, to your bank. That's no, the no, point it's not of a transaction it. cost. It, this is the USSD SMS charge. So it's the SMS but charge, it, not that, really. But that's still, for all practical purposes, that's a transaction cost, right? Yeah, yeah, but technically it's not related to the monetary yeah. transaction. Yeah, but <laughs> this is all, again, like uh, from a business point of view, things you have to worry about, right? As a, yeah, as a yeah. business starting off in the fintech space or trying to yeah. do something interesting for consumers. All of these things only add more barriers to entry for uh, for businesses. So yeah. while on one side we have social media exploding, people giving away every single detail about their private lives just to for vanity or for getting attention. Uh, the other end you have the rest of whatever we spoke about, right? Like telecom booming and right. those sectors becoming more and more active in giving you data and giving you access to technologies and the social web and so on. Whereas, ultimately, when it comes to commerce, right, this is a this is an aspect of, you can say, electronic commerce, right, uh, where uh, payments is the one of the biggest uh, things to change behavior. Indians still seem to not want to change. I mean, it's tough, man. I mean, like change, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we are so. Ca- I think we all, love cash. all humans are right. Yeah. Doesn't. Cash is, you know, I don't know why, yeah. what is wrong with cash? You know, it's, it's, you know, I mean, like in some ways not carrying much cash is a lot more convenient, yeah. right? I mean, like I prefer not to use cash, but I was like this even before demonetization. Yeah, I just all of us use credit cards. I use cards uh, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. We're the 3%. <laughs> That's actually the statistic <laughs> we fall under. Okay. And we are uh, the 3%. That doesn't sound as snappy as. <laughs> but the. That's the rest of the 97 is where the India story is, right? Yeah. That's the one the That's true. telcos are going after. That's the one uh, everyone's going every, after. The digital marketers are going after mm-hmm. and that's why they care about numbers so much. They say, hey, if I can get that many likes or posts or tweets to that huge audience out there, uh, they'll buy my stuff. Yeah. They'll buy my toothpaste or they'll buy my whatever else. The 3% is the folks like you and me who care about hey I rather hear an influencer who is qualitative rather than just quantitative yeah, right yeah. so again that's the 3% so that's why that's the entire basis of it's not even uh, 80 20 this is <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> exactly. so, so, how, so the real world out there is probably what I think we need to be aware of right as people who are building businesses people who are thinking ahead or people who are worried about privacy absolutely uh it's the it's when the 97 percent start thinking like you when all this really comes together 
So, well, you know, I don't know if the 97% is ever going to think like uh, think about privacy. I don't even think the 3% is accurate when it comes to thinking about privacy. Right. I, I, right. I will probably... See, that's a good point. Yeah. And even thinking is different, but doing something about, about it... About it is, yeah, <laughs> is a second this, right? It's theoretical right. knowledge yeah. is a different thing. Actually, yeah. doing something is a lot more challenging, you know. And you're constantly learning, right? Once you right. read an article, suddenly you say, oh... Two uh, FA has to be activated across platforms. <laughs> right. Oh, my swarm check-ins are you know, uh, is my run keeper uh, map on or off? You know, you know these are yeah. you know we you don't should, even realize. You should go into your Google and Facebook every so often and check how many things you auto logged into. Yeah, and, uh, you, and you authentic. Just, you know, we've given authentication to uh, so many apps. Right. Because you know Google and Facebook authentication is used everywhere. It's and, you easy. Know, yeah, I mean, like rather than creating an account, yeah, yeah, yeah use my Google. Yeah. So oh, and it's, it's, no, don't even get me started yeah. on how many permissions Android apps ask. Like so, literally, an app which does nothing will ask you for your so entire you life. You know what, though, I think that's a failure of Android, to be honest with you. Because I mean, like in one of the things that I did previously, but that's changed though. Huh? That's changed now. You might be right. I don't yeah. know. I, I haven't. For step I haven't done stuff in a, in, in a couple of years. Yeah. But a couple of years ago, when I was doing this stuff. Back then, it was just like, okay, you want to get location, get the location. You want to get how many, you want to get what yeah, apps they have on, on their that. phone, get yeah, that, get, that, get that also. You want to get this, take this, take this, take this. Basically, you, can, you could you know, replicate yeah. this data and make sense out of it. Yeah. Right. It's a different thing, what right. you could do with it, information, but you could at least capture it. Yeah. Right. So, it is, uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, like, I, I think that the way, uh, see, the openness is an advantage, but the openness is also a... No, that's, thing. I think you that's know what? exactly the... S- I had promised the other people on the network that this will not turn into an iOS versus Android contest. Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. But I think. But the, I think that stems the the crux of the India story is that, that yeah. while we want to be open and expanding, and we are expanding, we're growing like crazy uh, at the cost of what? At the cost of privacy? At the cost of brands misusing us? At the cost of the government itself stepping in and stepping on and, people's yeah, toes and basically forcing you into doing stuff yeah so these are existential uh, aspects of technology mm-hmm. which uh, i think uh, the more conversation around it is going to be uh, useful so hopefully this will uh, continue to have uh, we'll continue to have interesting conversations Absolutely. for you every week and uh, all right then so that brings us to the end of our show and i hope you guys had a good time uh, hope for everyone who's listening in to send us some feedback and girish why don't you tell us where to find you on the internet what you do so people can reach out yeah so i'm girish marlia on twitter snapchat facebook you know across platforms so you can reach me at any of those uh, twitter would be the most convenient uh, currently i'm like planning to go for a run to a brew pub so <laughs> running's next you know i need to get my workout in you know all right and what about you on uh sure you can find me as doshi amit on all the platforms basically and uh yeah uh, that's pretty much it uh, write to me there and i will we'll get back to you guys all right thanks guys thanks so much for coming in today and uh you everyone else listening can find me on shiladitya and i really hope to hear from you guys about what you thought about what you think we can talk about next and uh, any other feedback you have so let's make this uh, let's make this more engaging thanks so much thank you excuse me bhaiya excuse me bole madam menu mein kya hai menu mein seen and seen hai podcast hai on course hai cyrus hai mer in india rediscovery project empowering series sex wax hai ivm likes hai simplified hai keeping it queer hai things and destinations hai my neighbor zuckerberg hai aur the fan garage hai aapko kya chahiye hai एक बार रिपीट कर देंगे क्या रिपीट रिपीट नहीं करता हम आप जाओ आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट डॉट कॉम पे और सुनो ये सब या फिर डाउनलोड करो उनका ऐप सब आपकी उंगलियों पे